Hey guys, this is Manshark Sub LPs. I'm Sub, this is Crusader Kings 2, and this is Millennia in the Making episode 42? No, it's probably 43. Let's just check that. Yep, 43! Wow. We're currently playing as King Ulrich the Great of Bavaria, Pomerania, and Bohemia. He's the son of King Ludolf the Great, who himself was the son of King Otto, our first character. We're just going to chase off these Vikings up here. You know, it's important to do this sort of thing. And then we're going to be very nice to our lovely wife and declare war on some bitches. A Jewish exile fleeing persecution elsewhere in Europe has showed up. By all means, he's a, he's a diplomat-oriented character, and his name is Amram. There he is. Yeah, 15 isn't bad. He's actually got one of the highest opinions that I've seen out of these Jewish counselors. He's still got the minus 50 for being a foreigner and an infidel, but he's got plus 50 because he's content. Even so, not good. He is better than the current Chancellor, but the current Chancellor is a Duke. And Vegas through something we started in the last episode, we revoked the Temple of Stettin. We can't actually hold on to that because it's, you know, the wrong type, so we just create a new vassal for it. Nice and easy. However, what is this guy doing? He is proselytizing in Rana. Yep, yeah, Rana did convert to heresy at some point, but it's better now. So we're going to send them to Stettin. Wonderful. And hopefully that will convert the religion of the place. Anyway, yeah, so let's chase off these Vikings, you know, as you do. Just one of those things you've just got to do. Just, oh, the Vikings are back, I guess we better chase them off. They're already moving out. That's fine. Send them back. They're probably not moving out because of anything I'm doing, but because they finished getting all of the loot they could from the surrounding countryside. That's fine. Getting a bunch of... We did... Also, at the, last, at the end of the last episode, we changed the crown authority of Bavaria up one step to medium. So we're getting a little bit of vote shifting as people say, Oh, well, we're going to say we're not voting for you, but now we're going to say that we are. And, mm, you know, and just being very indecisive about the whole thing. A famous writer wishes to propose, compose our family chronicles so we could either give him patronage, which is a paltry sum, and get the proud trait, maybe, or ignore him, and maybe get the humble trait and piss off our entire family. Which is, it's so big that I can't actually tell if there's a percentage chance to get humble, or if we just get humble. Because, well... The list of people who get negative opinions of us is too great. There we go, and I know that I am great and deserve respect. I've gained the proud trait, so that's plus 0.5 prestige a month. Not that we were very hard up for prestige, I'll tell you. We've got amazing prestige. Which just means that everybody likes us more. That's how it goes. Alright, so when these guys get down to here, we're going to declare war on this kid. For, I think, for Asturias itself. We could do Castile and we could do Galicia, but Asturias is the bigger one. And all of them, everyone except Galicia, puts us in contact with the Umayyads, which isn't great. And Galicia is a single province, so, well, fuck that. Though, it, she'd also gained the county of Castellon. Where is Castellon? It should be part of Castile, shouldn't it? No, not that place. Is it... Is this one? Yeah, down here. Ah. Anyway, we're doing this to be nice to our wife. It doesn't actually give us any... extra land, personally. It just doesn't. Because she's our wife and not part of our dynasty and she doesn't hold land in our realm or anything like that. And if she did, she'd probably take it with her because we're about to give her a kingdom title. So, we're going to declare war for Asturias. We can't get him excommunicated because, well, he's a child. 
sort of a pope would excommunicate a child. Anyway, let's have a look. We'll be pressing Queen, Queen Etanet's claim on Bavaria. Now, while Queen Etanet is a carling, she has children by me who are Ludolfingers, so eventually this will become a Ludolfinger realm. Uh, if we're of the same dynasty, or if I'm a de jour liege of a kingdom, they'll become a vassal of me. They won't, because we're not. If we win the war, the king here loses 100 prestige. The queen gets the county of Astorga and the kingdom of Asturias. Let's find Astorga. It should be in these blue glowy areas. There we are, this one right here. So she gets this county personally and dominion over the rest of that. And hopefully after that she can press her own claims against Castile and Galicia. So, let's do it. We could call in West Francia, which we're going to do because he's nice and close by. And we could call in the Byzantine, but I think he's a bit too far away and I don't want to jeopardize relations just yet. Call up all our personal troops. Previously we did check on the place to see how many dudes it had on Asturias. Let's just gather them all up in St. Gala. No, we'll gather them all up in Bresgau. We can do that, even though it's not part of our holdings. Let me just get myself out of a leadership role. Thank you. Yeah, even though... <coughs> what was I saying? Was it the... Uh, it's something to do with the Byzantine guy. Yeah, even though we could call him in, we'd like him to stay at about 50 or so. West Francian joined in, wonderful. Because we're eventually going to go to war with Lotharingia. I really hate that name. And we'll get on that. Okay, dear uncle. This guy wants to kill my daughter. My three-year-old daughter. This might be a little, little bit hypocritical of me, but nobody kills children under my watch. He's the mayor of Wallen, and he's Slavic. Can I demand that he... I could just revoke his title, but I'm also going to imprison him because I have righteous imprisonment. Now he's safely locked away, and we're also going to revoke his title. Actually, no, we're not. We're just going to keep him locked away. I don't care. He'll die eventually. I don't think he has any... Well, cities have open electives, so they generate a random person to take it over. Democracy at work. Truces are expiring of Hungary in 60 days. That's all right. Don't particularly care at this stage. The only drama with attacking down into Asturias is that it's a fair distance away. We don't have enough boats. Yeah, see, we've got, at the moment, 11 boats, which could carry maybe, one. I think, 1,100 guys. And we can get another one from our personal demence. We'll eventually be able to raise up 30, wait, 23, but that's still only 2,300 guys. Each boat carries 100 people, I'm dead sure of that. And, yeah, it's just, it's not viable to ship them down in 1,000 lots. Better to have the whole army show up at once. You know, sort of a, we're here now, bitches. Anyway, the only real issue here is that attacking this far south, or not south, but it is south actually, kind of south, but this far away from our stuff leads us to the problem of oh that's interesting the Count of Well died eh. and Mecklenburg and spread his stuff around, that's fine I'm just waiting on this tiny little army here to get into contact with the main force but anyway the reason why sending this many troops overseas is kind of a bit of a drama is that in order to get them back, we have to actually march them back. If we put them, if we lower the levies while they're overseas, we'd lose something like half of them. Alright, let's head on over to Vizcaya. And I don't want to march through these places so much. 
I want to come into West Francia. Just tap West Francia so that they can get their stuff back. Come down here and tap Bordeaux and then come into Vizcaya from there. That way we won't have to worry about them being out of supplies while they tromp through Lotharingia and Aquitaine. It's good. It's good. Factions are still around, but they're nothing serious. It's Sif of Rostock and Prince Walram, and nobody likes Prince Walram, apparently. Yeah, so... Does he have a ticking? He doesn't even have a ticking war score against us. And that's probably because... Probably, maybe, because he doesn't hold all of Asturias. Portugal is about to have a real issue. There, That's the du jour lands there. But because the duchies of Algarve and Beja are no longer in the Kingdom of Portugal, which doesn't actually exist, I think. Let's check that. De Jure, Kingdom of Portugal. Yes, yeah, it doesn't even exist. But because they're no longer... They're held by a kingdom which owns their entire duchy, which is not part of Portugal. They're being phased into the Umayyad Sultanate which will actually finish in 9 years for Algarve and 15 years for whatever that place was, Beja. Yeah, whereas Portugal itself is still half-half, so it can't be phased anywhere. That's alright. So this little power move is a bit beyond our sphere of influence. I mean, really it is. It's all the way over in uh, the Iberian Peninsula. And it may call us into these weird wars of the Umayyads and all that sort of stuff. And let's be honest, getting into a war with the Umayyads isn't going to be wonderful for us. I believe that they're the Arabians? No, nope, they're the Andalusians. They have 18,000 guys. I have 18,000 guys, but it's an even matchup sort of thing. And they'll be much closer to what they're declaring war for. I do have a Byzantine Empire on side, though, so that could uh, tip the scales. And West Francia, too, with their 6,000 troops. However, the Umayyads... Yeah. See, the Umayyads have a bonus from their decadent trait, in that they're not very decadent at all. So their troop morale is increased by 34%, and they get more money. I'd like for that to be inverted, so that they were getting the penalties, because the penalties are direct. You get a troop morale penalty and an income penalty. Oh, something interesting has happened here. East Francia is no more. Something very interesting has happened here. Oh, I'm beginning to regret declaring war on Asturias now. <laughs> because the former king of East Francia has died, giving the title to King Halori here. Now, because the former king of East France, he was apparently German, though it might have also been because he was a carling. It was known as East Francia. Now, because it is held by this fellow, who is a Breton, which is part of the Celtic group, it's now known as Germany. Also, this guy has one ally who he has imprisoned. We can't even declare war on him because, well, We've raised army levies. But as soon as we are capable of doing it, we're going to declare war on this guy. Not for any claimants or anything like that, because, well, bug of the claimants, but we're going to declare war for Thuringian and then usurp his title from him. But first, we need to win a war down here in Iberia. I don't think it'll be very difficult for us to win this war. We do outnumber the guys. And my liege, I have managed to sow distrust between the Bishop Stefan of Redon and his liege King Holori. I hope this pleases you. That's wonderful, but it's irrelevant now. Because we were trying to get the kid killed off. So that it would go to the Babin Burgers, but they're no longer in the succession. So, our Chancellor can go and do something else somewhere. We were having him try to bolster relations in Byzantine, so let's just send him down there as backup, you know. It can be handy to have the Byzantine Empire's 30,000 troops backing you up. I 
It's a long march down to Iberia, and you know what, that's fine. Uh, the mayor is asking for suitable accommodations, so have that view of you filthy, possessed, Slavic, Pomeranian, lowborn, trying to plot my child's murder person. My nephew here has got a fairly nice martial stat out of nowhere. Good. He also doesn't have a bride. Let's marry him to somebody. We would, we're not going to get any alliances out of this. And something even better has happened. Uh, let's just save this one. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of minus prestige for him, but I don't care about his prestige. Done. The Duchess of Austria has died. This kid, Duke Hartman, is now in charge. And Duke Hartman, as you may notice, is a little finger. Excellent. That's why we married Prince Lofa here to Duchess Euphemia. That's exactly why we did it. Okay, yep, wonderful. There's the army of Asturias. They're going to try and beat up the king of East France here. West France here. East France here is no longer a thing. Don't know how well that's going to go for them. It's alright though, because I've got 14,000 men. I don't need to worry about these 2,000 who are moving around strangely. We are going to beat this army up though. It's war score. It's a lot of war score. They are, however, in mountains. That's a big problem with Iberia, actually. There's a lot of mountains around, so... We're just going to come over here and besiege Astorga very quickly. We're getting raided in our capital by some goddamn Vikings. Fortunately, they are unable to progress the siege because the garrison is just too big. They just sailed all the way up the Danube. From where? Wow, okay, so they came... All the way down here, through this little portage here, all the way down the Danube here, down to Black Sea, and then all the way up the Danube just to raid me. Bunch of assholes. Anyway, yeah, so we're going to quickly move these guys to Astorga, besiege it, and just, you know, win. We could attack these guys, but they're in mountains. They're going to stay in the mountains, and play silly buggers with the king of West France here, here. I think. Oh, that's actually going to be fairly close. I don't know if they'll catch them or not. They caught them. Alright, change of plans. We'll go back them up. Jousting lists have been completed in Munchen. That's wonderful. We might not be able to get to this by the time that it finishes, but we'll be attacking into hills with no river penalty, so that's fine. We're taking attrition there. Hmm. Well, hopefully we move off before that impacts on us too much. Yeah, so the West Francian has lost that battle. But that should be fine as long as he doesn't move too fast. So he's going to move out on the 26th. We'll get there on the 26th. So it, it's an even sort of matchup. We are going to take another tick of attrition penalty, so that's going to suck. But it'll be fine. Actually, we're going to try and keep this on a very fine timing, so I'm going to turn the time down. If he moves out, I don't want to move into Kunkka. So we're just rapidly unpausing and pausing the game. Ah, bugger it. We moved at the exact wrong moment. That's alright, we'll chase him down. Ah, we can afford to lose a couple of thousand to attrition, it's fine. He lies. And then we'll just move to Castellon because it's closer. We are actually taking... No, that's for the battle. We lost 4% war score because our ally got beaten up. And he's going to get beaten up again, but they're not going to be able to move out of those mountains. 14th, 7th. So we're going to hit him. It's not going to be a wonderful battle. Let's put this speed back up, just because we're doing it in mountains. However, a 
Apparently the West Francians have decided that they should lead particular forces, but it's not a big concern. We outnumber these people. And yeah, they've got a collapsing flank. It's collapsed. Their middle column is about to go. Here it goes. There we are. And their final column is dead. 40% war score. Beautiful. And we're actually going to chase them down and just be done with it. Oh, the Duke of Tyrrell is imprisoning people um, because he won his little revolt. Lovely. Military organization in Nida Bayan increased. That's alright. I just beat up some guys. Wonderful. Another 22% war score. He's probably not going to. Yeah, come on, you pansy. Alright. You asked for it. And we'll head on over to... We'll actually just head straight to Leon. Because it's one of his holdings as well, so he's raised troops from it. Leon, Astorga, Asturias de Oviedo, which is up here. And Castellon, which is down here in... Well, what is that? Castile? No, Valencia. How misnamed. So, once again, we wait. Everything seems to be in order. Still pressing those weak claims, it's fine. Somebody, uh, yep. Got a new Duke in Corinthia, Duke Wigorek here. And he, of course, favors himself. There we go. It's fine. And now we besiege this place. We're not going to be besieging it for long because I'm just going to flat out assault it. I have no interest in hanging down here for too long. I want to get back up and take East Francia. So, nice little assault. We're going to lose a couple of hundred men. Uh, I grow more and more impatient with Chancellor Duke Karl. His slothfulness makes him go to extreme lengths to avoid having to do any actual work. See, he's slothful. And I'm not diligent, but, you know, whatever. Okay, we're going to give him a stern talking to, or we could get a 25% chance of becoming slothful ourselves. We don't want to become slothful. So, he gets a stern talking to. And this may make him shape up. Oh, there's my antivirus again. Tell that to go away. May make him shape up, or it may make him say, well, fuck you. That's all right. And, yep, yep, when I had finished talking sternly to Chancellor Duke Karl I, that's not first, that's an I, I didn't really expect him to talk back, but the anger that filled him fast was vented immediately. I ignored it and left Chancellor Duke Karl, barely able to speak because of his anger. You had it coming. So we get a negative opinion malice against him, which is fine, it doesn't matter. All right, we're just quickly running through the sieges on these bishoprics and cities because, well, they're not very defensible. And we can honestly afford the losses. There we go. We're not going to assault the uh, Citadel of San Pedro de Pere. Perex? Peri? Just because it's got 1,600 men behind it. But we are going to kind of wander around and beat up the rest of this guy's stuff. Just take the easy things. Which is mainly the places that he's raised troops out of. Cities and bishoprics. And we get a fair amount of gold for doing that. Though we are losing a fair amount of gold. Because, well mainly because of the assaulting. Because our retinues have, have to reinforce. We could turn that down a little bit. But fuck it. We're going to be fine. If we have to, we can just stop them. So, yep, this is another place that we're just going to assault. Maybe lose 100 men in the progress, it's fine. They signed up for a reason. Yep, 85 men we lost, that's fine. We're going to hit this city. These are actually pretty defensible cities. If you see here, they do have fortifications and walls. But, you know, they're not wonderful. I mean... Point eight is the fort level there. 
Excellent, and now the bishopric, which again is a little bit more well defended. It's got one point of fort level. We're just going to let that siege finish before we look at this peace offer, because then we get a bit of money. Um, you live in harmony and contentment. We surrender under these terms. He loses 100. My wife gets the county and the kingdom. Done. Done, done, done. And now you can see she's left our court because she is now the queen of Asturias. Which actually isn't going to be that big. No, it's a very small area and now... Let me check on this. This guy is now king of Castile. That's fine. Not as good as I expected it to be. And also we can't declare war on him because we don't have any valid Casus Belli. Because our wife no longer counts as being part of our court. And we just need to quickly send our guys back up so that we can get rid of them. See, if we opted to get rid of them here, we would lose a lot of troops. I'm not in the mood for losing a lot of troops. We already lost a lot in those assaults, which has inadvertently strengthened the factions. So if we had strong factions, we would have been waiting instead of, you know, that. So, the good thing here is that when our wife dies, she'll pass on her titles to Prince Adelbert. Which is good. Because he's a lot of finger. It does put us into contact with the Umayyads, but, you know, it was going to happen eventually. Let's unpause the game so our guys actually move. And when we get back up here, we have a very important war to go along with. Germany. Uh, Sophia Macedon, the former, or the widow of a uh, good King Lodolf, has died. She has passed a weak claim on the Byzantine Empire to Count Walram here. It will not be inherited. That's fine. Unless we press it. And we're not going to press it because, let's be honest, the Byzantines have almost twice our number of troops. And are all the way down here. It would be nice to have, but... Yeah, I'm not particularly caring. Okay, so they're out of supplies. That's an issue because they are going to suffer from attrition all the way back. I'm not too sure if bumping them through the West Francians lands will get them supplied. Let's try that out. So we just make them hit into Bordeaux, and if they do get resupplied, wonderful. Aquitaine is still running elective. West France here is now still running Gavelkind. Eh. It's not particularly a concern for me. So you can see we actually spread the Carling influence down here a little bit, but it doesn't matter. It won't be Carling for long. Not that I'm planning to murder my wife or anything, she's just going to die naturally. And she can't have any children but aren't of Lodolfinger descent. Hmm. And it looks like she got kicked out. Amazing. That was a very short-lived reign that she just had. And a massive waste of time. Wow. So we could press these claims, but it would be a uh, truce-breaking. This guy kicked her out. Alright, fine. Wasted effort. Wonderful. And yeah, these guys have not been resupplied. They are going to take 0.7 of their numbers in attrition per month. We could just lower them. But I think that the amount of troops they lose getting back will be far less than the 1700 or so that we would lose otherwise. Let's just keep them moving. The battle for... 
the Ferengian here isn't going to be too tough. It's just one guy. This guy. And I don't believe his vassals will even like him. So they probably won't contribute a lot of troops. Let's just have a look at that. We're looking for Germany now. Because it's not East France here anymore. I didn't see him on the first page. I've probably missed him. Hold up a second. There we are. Germany has 3,700 troops. Less than the Pope. Oops. We're being asked to come into a war against Aquitaine. We'll accept that because it's a defensive war, but we're not going to help out. And my liege, I wish to intercede on behalf of one of your prisoners. So, Mayor Miloslav, who is still Slavic. Surely a show of mercy would please all your vassals. You know, we're just going to... We're going to revoke his title to begin with. Uh, actually, no, we're not. We're going to release him. That's fine. And we should get a little bit of an opinion boost there, but then we're just going to revoke his title and nobody will care because he's Slavic. There we go. And that's given us the city, which we just need to get rid of. Done. Looks like the Lotharingian has joined in this war as well. Oh, and fortunately, this has actually resupplied us and will keep us in supply until we get back home. That's pretty cool. And we don't have to worry about Germany joining the war, because they're not allied to anybody. It's good. And hopefully we can get the war with the... well, the upcoming war with Germany over and done with before the end of this episode, which is in about 20 minutes. I'm really pleased that I've been keeping pretty much on time with that sort of stuff of late. It's very easy to do when you've got a stopwatch right next to you. Should have thought about it a while ago. Yeah, it looks like... well, it looks like Yoela here might fancy me. She is the wife of my nephew. Hmm, he's a pretty good diplomat. My nephew isn't really doing much, and he doesn't own anything important. You know, we've been quite nice to our wife of late. You know, it's not our fault that she lost the kingdom a few days after she got it. So I think we'll make a move. What? We've earned it. Seriously. I went to Guela's chamber and gave her a good tumble. It's good to be the king. So, we now have a lover. And she's a nice Italian lady. She has a daughter. No, that's a rival. My mistake. That's going to be a little weird about how a 23-year-old has a 20-year-old daughter. She doesn't have any daughters. She's also the sister to this guy, who is a patrician of one of the Venetian families. Eh. Shouldn't be too much of a thing. She might give us some bastards at some point, but whatever. There'll still be, probably be Lotto Fingers, but they don't inherit and things like that. Alright, we're almost home. We're home. Put down the levees. We probably won't need to raise any levies to deal with Germany here. And we're actually just going to straight up declare war on him right now. Four for engine. Done. So he's got a retinue here. And you can tell that because it's 500 men and it was already raised. We don't need to call in anybody to help us out. Like hopefully he raises those guys. He did. So now we just kind of tromp through all of his armies. I'm holding down caps lock. I mean to be holding down shift. There we go. And just up to there. And we'll see how we go at that point. We may reorder those as well. So we wipe these guys out nice and easy. 
9% war score. We're not going to get up there in time, so we're going to go up there. We're going to wait here for a day. Now we're going to go up there. And we will definitely catch that army. He's not leading it because he's a kid. We do need a lot more gold, though. Purely because usurping the title will cost us money. He's got some pretty good military commanders. Shame he doesn't have the numbers, right? So that army should be wiped out, or close to it. 16% wall score. We just chase him down. If we're lucky here, we might be able to win this without taking any holdings. There's another 7% war score. Yeah, we won't worry about that. It doesn't reinforce quick enough. We're coming up to lining in through Württemberg to avoid the river penalty, and because it's apparently faster. And it's where he appears to be, well, maintaining his men. Or gathering them up, would be the appropriate expression. There we go. Nice. Easy. It's such a joy having retinues, I have to admit. And we're actually making a lot more... It's 21% war score. We're making a lot more money than we would if we'd had levies for this purpose. Still won't accept, right? Yep. Untouched armies and holdings. That particular modifier is to prevent you from just smashing something up and, you know, trying to basically blitzkrieg yourself. Don't care about that truce. That truce is unimportant. Blitzkrieg yourself a victory before the other guy has a chance to react. See, right now we're at 63% war score. A normal person would probably give in at this point. Like, if this penalty wasn't in existence. Because, you know, we've basically wiped out his entire army. And we actually have vision on every single one of his provinces. Because they're all next to our ones. So we can tell that. But, because we haven't actually taken any of his stuff, he thinks he can still recover. He probably could if we weren't, you know, going to be dicks to him. Okay, um, this guy is being declared a heretic by our chaplain. He is a direct vassal of mine. But he's a pretty good vassal, so we're just going to say, of course he's a heretic. It's not going to... Yeah, see, we're still at 100. Because I'd like to keep our chaplain fairly on side. There is a German army up there, but they can't progress the sieges, the sieges up there, so we're just going to come down here. And break into this place. And again, if we wanted to make the siege go faster, we'd raise up... Uh, you know, 4,600 levies. But, at the moment, we're getting a lot of income. He keeps on accusing this guy of being a heretic. Of course he's a heretic. He was that last time. Now we've got a bit of a negative thing going on there. Can we imprison him for being a heretic? Nope. Because he's not actually a heretic. Our chaplain is just being a bit overzealous. I believe tuberculosis just broke out in Gelrare. Yep. They call it consumption. Because that's what it was called. So, significantly reduced... Well, I say that, but it's still at 21,000 for me. Reduced supply limits, chances of guys getting it, and all that sort of stuff. So it's not the best place for those guys to be besieging right now. Even if they could progress the scale. But it shouldn't prove any sort of tangible effect. This guy wants to kill some guy called Ludwig. Yeah, you should probably not do that. Part of telling people when to end plots. Ah, oh, we've lost the zealous trait because my favorite subject does not interest me anymore and I can't speak about it with the same zeal as before. Which unfortunately means the Pope now doesn't like us at all. One, because we asked him for money a while back. 
So we could actually, actually be excommunicated at this point, which would be a very bad thing. It costs a lot of money to get it good with the Pope, but that's why we have uh, the buy indulgence thing, which we might we might undertake if when we get that much money, but there are more important things to deal with first. Huh. There's been a revolt in Germany. That's alright, that just distracts this guy even more. What we don't want though is for this revolt to win before we do. Because if they win, we won't be able to usurp the title of the Kingdom of Germany for five years. Which would be a pain in the arse. It, it'd just turn it into another waiting game. So let's get this siege on with. We could attack this place, maybe, but I'm not keen on doing it. We'll probably attack the bishopric or the barony. Not the barony. Oh, this place doesn't actually have a city. That's interesting to me. What is it? Furstenberg? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> So depending on how things go, we might actually attack that army, this army here, the revolt. Just to stop them from winning. Also, we need that revolt to end before we can usurp the title, because you can't usurp a title of someone who is at war, and the King of Germany will be at war. Training grounds were built in Andex. We also have to save up enough money to buy ourselves another knight retinue. We easily have the cap for it at this stage. But we're just waiting on this siege to finish. And maybe that'll give us enough to win the war. We might not press it initially because we'll attack the uh, rebel army. But we could also finish the war and then say, Hey buddy, want us to join in that war? Okay, we've got a son, Herbert Ludolfinger. Uh, well, it's kind of not... Oh, whoops. <laughs> it seems my dalliance with Guella has resulted in a child. Fortunately, Amalric, her husband, thinks little Herbert is his. <coughs> Oops. I think there were some effects on that, but I didn't particularly care. Uh, my daughter requires an education. Stewardship from the looks of it. Hmm. Now, I'd say a layer man can educate her. He's a good old chap, even if he, you know, is missing his balls. Literally. He's a eunuch. Yeah, we don't need to call in any allies. I don't want to press any of these claims. Because they're all against either the Castilian, who I have a truce with, the Norwegian, which I'd have to come all the way up here for, or the Lotharingian, who we don't kind of don't want to mess with at this stage. He will be the next sort of thing that we want to break after East Francia and the Pagans. But, you know... I'd prefer for him to die. Oh, actually. Ah, oh, he must have had a child. Yeah, he did die. He died a few months ago. But before he died, he had a child. Who we're going to have brutally murdered. And because that child was male, everybody wants in, because the child was male, all of the kingdoms went straight to him because that's what Agnetic Cognetic Gavelkind does. It goes to the male child, if there is one, and splits among the male children. If there are no male children, it gets split among the female children. <sighs> it's kind of irritating to me. Whatever. An heir to the kingdom of Lothringia, an heir to the kingdom of Italy. Okay, so if we kill him, we'll still have the same split that was going on before. And fortunately, he can't have any children because he's zero. He is, however, a genius. So it's a good thing that we've caught on to this to kill him up 
like to kill him straight fast. Because, well, it would be a bad thing to have a genius Carling King. Actually, no. No, 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 he is Carling, he is Carling. I was clicking of the wrong guy there. I was thinking of German. But yeah, a genius Carling King could be very bad news for us, so it's a good thing that we're going to knock him off. Yeah, I'm a little leery of assaulting this bishopric because it is it does have a fairly decent fort level for a bishopric, and we'll get it eventually anyway. What we will do is let this siege up here progress with Falkmar's German revolt, and then go up there and steal it off them. After we take the bishopric of Hissau and the barony of Zollern. Hopefully we can do that in the next 10 minutes so that we can wrap this up before the end of the episode. But if not, well, you know. This guy wants to kill this guy. He could almost do it too. No. This kid looks pretty cool, so... You! Stop. Wait. No, no, you can stop that shit. Stop. That shit. Good man. Money's really uh, popping up quite nicely. We could afford to get that levy. And also we've improved relationships with the new Byzantine Emperor. My son-in-law. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Yeah, quite cool. Quite cool. My granddaughter... They're not Lotto Fingers because it was impossible to get the matrilineal marriage there. But in the event of this girl growing up and him having no more children, which seems unlikely on the face of it, just because he's nice and strong, and, well, she's a Lotto Finger. Of course she's fertile. But, you know, we'll keep an eye on it occasionally. Yes, wonderful. How's the murder plot going? 98%. We'll just pay this guy some money. Should be 50 gold. That's a lot. I would like to do this, but I'd like to do it cheap. 42. That's a bit better. We'll, we'll do that one. Come on in, bro. We do need to get that kid killed. It's important. But, as I was saying, we're getting a lot of money fairly quickly. We could buy that other retinue, the knight retinue that we've been talking about. But I'd like to save up on the money on the off chance that we can quickly take East Francia. Because then we might be able to form the Holy Roman Empire almost straight away. I think we're, we're still about 31 holdings short. So that's not amazing. We've just had a natural tech level increase in Oberbayern. Light infantry has increased to level 2, which is great. Cavalry's on the getting close. Just having been held as our marshal researching tech is exceptional. Like It's just on wonders to keep us up to speed. I'm very happy that we had that event chain go off and that it worked out nicely for us. It's a little bit of turbulence, but, you know, take what you can get. So the next economy advance that we want to take will definitely be improved keeps. So we need to keep that level with castle infrastructure just to keep it maintained. Because also some things in castle, castle infrastructure require you to have a particular level of walls. So we're a fair way off that. That's, it's no drama. Good, we won that, and the next siege will progress rather swiftly. As for culture... I'm thinking tolerance, because we are getting a few different cultures in our realm now. Religion's all the same, but culture... Culture is definitely changing. We're predominantly German, don't get me wrong there, and we are slowly converting places. See here, these ones have already been converted to German itself, but we still have some Pomeranians and some Bohemians, and if we expand even further, we're going to get Polish and, what's this, Prussian. 
and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, and down here we'll, we'll definitely start running into Italian groups and all that sort of stuff. And they're not just they're not just different cultures, but they're also different culture groups. Like Italian is part of a Latin culture, as are the Franks and the Dutch are West Germanic, so that's a decent place for expansion. The Norse and North Germanic, so that is a different culture group. The Pomeranians and the Bohemians and the Polish are all West Slavic. Yeah, it's just not wonderful. Though, on the religion side of things, uh, our plot got found out to kill the Lothringian king. It's fine. We do still have a over 100% chance, so it'll happen eventually. Unfortunately, he will never back us up in a war again. But hey, that's alright. We don't need him. He was never an ally. So, we might increase tolerance. It's pretty expensive, so we might do majesty instead. Because that, that is progressing itself very slowly. And it's cheaper because we've already got a partial bit of progression. We could do popular customs or religious customs. We'll hold out for noble customs, which is actually the most important one of those three. And as for military... I don't want to finish up any of these because we're going to wait until Binhild dies before we do anything with military tech. Up to that point, we're just saving it. And we're doing that because she ele like she escalates military tech very quickly. So if we purchase something, there's nothing to save it. We wouldn't have gotten that already from her multiplier effect. Uh, time's a ticking. Not sure if we'll be able to finish this war before the end of the episode. Which will irritate me because, well, I'm really interested in seeing how it goes. And I'll actually have to continue it tomorrow and not today. I usually record two episodes a day so that I get this bit of bit of a backlog going, which is really handy. It means that when I'm, when this weekend I go out to GM my Death Watch game, wow, well, now Isentrude fancies me. She's lowborn, but she's charismatic, she's a duelist, she's gluttonous, she's lustful, and she's deceitful. Yeah, you know, I have been really good to my wife really good to my wife. It's not my fault that, you know, she's not that good at holding on to her own kingdom. So we're going to make a move here too. 54-year-old sidles up to the 17-year-old. Hey, baby, how is it going? Do you know I own a kingdom? Well, we have a peasant revolt. This fellow, who is amazingly terrible, has declared the peasant revolt for Teshin on King Ulrich the Great. That's me. The peasants have risen up in Teshin, led by a disgruntled former soldier. The rebels have the nerve to demand independence. My silence here is because this peasant rebellion consists of 800 dudes. So, what do they want to begin with? If I enforce demands, I get 20 prestige, which is chump change, and we imprison this dude. If I offer white peace, I get 10 prestige and I imprison this dude. If I surrender, which we're definitely not going to do, he gets the County of Passion, Teshin, sorry, and he becomes independent, and I lose 100 prestige. We're obviously not going to surrender. What we are going to do is very simple. Raise up 3,500 bros here, get out of leading the army, Put Retold in control of that part, that guy in control of that part, and just send him over. We don't even have to abandon our siege or anything like that. I went to Isentrude's chamber and gave her a good tumble. It's good to be the king. So, now we have two lovers. Excellent. <laughs> and this one isn't even married to one of my relatives. actually kind of amusing. I've been listening to a song lately which kind of emphasizes 
the problems of having multiple girlfriends, if you will. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I'm sure it won't be a drama for us. It seems that the West Francian is winning the war down here against Aquitaine, and that's alright. It preserves the status quo sort of thing, because it's a defensive war on the West Francian's part. Yeah, so these guys are just going to sit here and besiege this place and try to occupy it and then declare themselves independent. But we're going to wander over and beat the shit out of them. They're not very good at leading, from what I can tell. This guy has eight marshal. His courtiers, who are all leading parts of the army. This one has nine. This one has 13, so it's a bit better. And this one... Oh, right. He doesn't actually have three courtiers. He has two courtiers in himself. He's there because he's still part of his court, despite it being a little bit redundant to consider himself, you know, a courtier in the court that he owns. Big Polish revolt going on over here that I hadn't really noticed. What's the, uh, what's the go, bro? He's defending against, uh, it's an alliance thing. This is the one we're looking at. He's defending against the Polish revolt for some guy's control of Poland. How's that going for him? 42% in his favor. Eh, doesn't matter. We are getting a message that we've got vassal levies raised too long. That's because we raised all of the troops in Oberbayern, including those from Dachau and maybe some from Freising. That's alright. Mayor opinions don't matter, for the most part. He is going to move out. That's alright, because we'll chase him out and then chase him up to Apollon. So off he... Oh, he didn't get to move out because the army of Apollon came along and said, Hey, we're going to do our duty for king and country. So yeah, that, that's gone perfectly for us. Absolutely perfectly. We don't get any war score for that because we didn't actually attack them. But we did imprison the guy who is the... No, we didn't imprison the guy. Apollon imprisoned the guy. So we can't enforce demands. He thinks things are going his way. Additionally, if we... Because he's already imprisoned, we don't get to imprison him again. We just get the prestige. That's fine. Even if we don't get any war score, if this guy has no army left, like if it gets wiped out by other guys, we can declare victory. Siege of Zolan went well. That's good. We we're waiting on that. Now we're going to head up to Mainz and deal with that. No, that's going to be... Nope, there's no river crossing between Fowls and Mains, despite appearances. I'm sure this has been a thing before that I've mentioned. But whatever, we'll just win this little thing. There we go, we only got 75% from that. And also, uh, this guy got a maid near King Orgia, so cool. But we have 100% war score because he doesn't have any armies left. Done. And we actually got him prison transferred to our court. I think. Maybe? No, no, he's still imprisoned in Apollon. That's weird. And we can just tell these levies to piss off. And I've just noticed the time. We're almost at that hour mark, so we're going to call it there. So if you've got any questions, feel free to ask them. Love to, you know, respond to some of those for you guys. Any comments, leave them below. If you liked the video, give it a like. And if you'd like to see more of this sort of stuff, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But, in the meantime, I've been Sub. You've been yourselves. Later.